Welcome guys, my name is Eddie, and this is my first table saw how to cross cut sled tutorial. Um, I got my little sidekick with me, Nico, my son, and uh, today we're taking this old hunk of whatever it is, table saw cross cut disaster, and we're gonna turn it into something beautiful. So. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're probably gonna burn that thing, and uh, so we're 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 turning it into a nice, usable, efficient table saw crosscut sled. See you in a year. Just, just say, all right, we're gonna wear this thing now. We're gonna make a better one. And after that, we're gonna cue the intro. What's up, guys? Hey, my name is Eddie, and welcome to Rebirth Woodworking. All right guys, so here I'm ripping down a piece of half inch plywood. That's what I'm using for this project. I do, do not own a track saw, so I had to improvise a little bit. I end up using a level to get this straight edge. Once you get everything lined up, I would suggest taping it. I only went around the top instead of going around the whole thing. So by going around the whole thing, it actually does eliminate tear out. And once you're done with all that, you just make your cut. All right, now I'm simply just ripping down strips for the front and back walls, or fence, however you want to say it. And like I said, I'm using half-inch plywood, so I'm just ripping four pieces up and I'm gluing them together. And I'm also using the Cat's Moses stop block here. I also want to incorporate a lot of other features in this sled to make it most efficient. And uh, at the end, I'll show you everything I did. And uh, let's just say I went a little bit overboard on it, but it is sweet, so... So here I'm gluing up my strips. I use Type Bond 3 and it works great. And I also use the level to make sure that everything's straight as it can be. And just put your glue on, um, give it a decent amount, and then just spread it all around. Make sure it's nice and even. Um, nice, decent amount, I'd say like a liberal amount. And then see how I just use the straight edge here and some clamps just to make sure that it's um, nice and straight. I'm good to go. Now I need to make my runners for the miter slots. So I use the digital gauge to get that as close as possible and I can sneak up on the fit. So I raise the blade up uh, so I can get the teeth between the fence and the actual blade so I can get my tight fit here. And I just start ripping them down just a little bit at a time. Uh, just make sure you don't take too much off or else you're going to have a very loose fit. Now add washers or pennies to boost up the runners so they're slightly above the tabletop and they're sitting proud. Place your runners in the slot and just add a little bit of CA glue. And then on the bottom or the base of the sled, you can just spray the activator. Now go slow here, just make sure it's lined up with the fence and just press down and then you can add weights to the, to the top of this. Just for, I don't know, 30 seconds to a couple minutes. Now flip it over and just be real careful when you flip it that you don't move and you can start drilling and screwing in your screws. Now make sure, like I said, I'm only using half inch, so make sure you don't use ones that are going to go through the bottom or actually I guess it would be the top of the actual sled. So mine were sticking a little, my runners were sticking out a little bit, so I just ran it through just to cut off that edge. And then um, they were a little bit tight, so I figured I'd just sand them down slightly just to have a better, smoother fit. And um, I end up using cherry. I had cherry, so I end up just using cherry. It's a pretty nice hard wood. And um, then after I put some paste wax on it, it was, it was pretty smooth. It's a tiny bit loose, but it's not too bad. All right, guys, so I got all my pieces cut. Um, I have the back fence or the front fence, however you want to say it. I have my base and then this back or front piece. So the concept is I'm going to put this extruded aluminum, it's 36 inches wide. And I'm going to put this extruded or this uh, extruded aluminum along this fence. And then that way once I connect this to my base, what I can do is to get it squared up with the blade, I can um, use the five cut method that 
uh, I think his name's William Ng or whatever. Anyways, he's on YouTube. He has a video with the five cut method. But anyways, wherever I need to go, if I need to kick it out, or if I need to like, however I need to go, I can move this. And I can add like little playing cards behind it or shims or something just to get that to shift, whichever way I need to shift it. I got a measuring tape. I'm not really 100% sure if I'm gonna use it yet. I don't know how I'm gonna use it. And I have the Cat's Moses stop block, which is really nice because it has like de zero deflection. Um, it's very, it's very nice. It's very useful. The main thing is this piece right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut strips and um, put them in this slot right here. And eventually, when I get down, I'm gonna put T-tracks in here. So there's gonna be T-tracks. So I don't have to dado anything in. I don't have to, you just drop, this is half inch, just drop that in. And then that way, if this, if I wanna put a dado stack in, I just remove that piece, run the dado stack, and it doesn't mess my zero clearance up. And it also gives me flexibility where if I have to replace something, it's easy, I just replace that piece. So it's kind of efficient and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good system. But that's, that's the, uh, those are the pieces, that's the plan. Um, the width of this sled is 36 inches wide. I should, I should have 24 inches, yep. 24 inches to the blade. So I'll have a 24 inch cut. And I think that's yeah 12 so it's uh it, it'll give me plenty of room to, to make my cuts all right and I also have these t-tracks um, which is really nice because a you're able to cut these because it's an aluminum you can cut them on a miter saw um, you can cut them on a table saw you have to be careful I mean I don't have a saw stop yet Eventually, someday, I hope to, I plan to have one, but you have to be careful with the stall stops because they'll um, it'll tri it'll trip the brake and it'll it'll mess it up with the aluminum. So, but that's that's the idea is to have these in here. Obviously, these will be cut down, so they'll be somewhat like in between the blade, like that, and then this one will be over here just for like longer pieces, and then I'll cut those, and I'll leave like about two inches right here actually i'll probably cut it right before that screw hole so that's the game plan um how we're gonna do it i'm excited because uh that like i said that other cross cut sled just it it, it wasn't good so i'm excited about the new one and this is kind of like the the basic general gist of it um basically i just got to assemble things and um yeah let's get to it all right guys so here i'm just putting the extruded aluminum along the fence that we cut up and glued and i just used some clamps to make sure everything's straight and um i wanted to get my level or my square on that or not my level my square so i just clamped each side down one part at a time and i started from the left and i made sure that everything was square each little or each hole that I drilled um, when I moved down I made sure that it was square so I just kept moving my way down I countersunk and I drilled everything out and I just use I don't even remember how long of a screws I used but yeah I just worked my way down now this fence isn't as important so of course I wanted to make sure it was as square but it's the extruded aluminum aluminum is going to be where we do the pivot part so here i'm just raising up the blade and i'm making my first cut i'm pretty sure i was probably nervous doing it and so we just run through and make the cut and it went pretty good so it went through and i end up just making like a test cut just to see how square it was and it, it moves really nice it's very smooth now at this point we only had the two the front and the back fence and then the base half inch so then we're gonna build that up here so right here 
we are cutting down the aluminum and I used actually it was a brand new blade but the blade that came with my miter saw I took it off and I changed it out to a Diablo blade anyways I changed it back to that uh, that old blade or I guess it would be a brand new blade and then there goes my son with his cinematic shot <laughs> that's pretty sweet I caught it thick enough, but it's fine. Uh, I'll put this back. I forgot. All right, we're gonna try to get a little bit closer here. So we're about three thousandths off. Okay, so. dead money wow point zero 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 nine eight six one point zero zero one is good but I got point zero 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 nine eight that's sweet man so I'm just gonna go through a brief little overview of what I was dealing with there so I started off with a piece like that so you start off with mark that number one and then once you make that cut you're going to rotate it the cut side that you just cut put it along the fence you're going to make number two cut that same thing rotate it put that along the fence mark it number three same thing twist it again put that along the fence four now you're back at your first cut, which would be cut five. So once you make that cut, sorry, let me move this stuff out of the way here. Once you make that cut, like I said, you, you, go, you go about an inch. It doesn't have to be exact, but I was pretty close there. I just kind of eyeballed it also, but you, you go about an inch thick and you cut that sliver, okay? So your, your top cut, which would be right there is A. That was my number from the digital reading, okay? Same thing. You got B, that's toward this fence right here. And you get that number. And then you take the length, top to bottom. That was 13 and a half. So you put all that in the calculator and it gives you a total of how much of a gap you need to put in there so that's my gap right there it's pretty big and like I said I thought I was a lot closer um, I'm gonna have to fill in some of these spots look at the deflection in that it is what it is nothing I could do about it I'll just go through and I'll, I'll put in little filler spots in there I have all these the little feeler gauge I'll go through and just put them in there um, but that's the total right here. This is this is the sweet spot right here. This is how much I needed. I went ahead and I pre-cut all my pieces for the top. That way they just drop in. I pre-drilled, I countersunk everything, and I just dropped them in and screwed them down. 
one piece at a time, putting the T-track next to one piece, and then just so on and so forth, until I got to the blade, and then I end up making my cut for my zero clearance. I was just getting my tape lined up here, and I think I was still waiting for the other piece to come, so I figured I'd just throw like a little edit here together. Came out kind of cool. All right guys, so we skipped a few steps here, but I just wanted to get to explaining what I did to this. And so I'm gonna start off with the tape measure. Um, I, find, I did incorporate it. I ripped a piece of half inch down and I put a chamfer on it. That way the dust has somewhere to go whenever I'm putting my wood up against this fence here. I incorporated the Cat's Moses, obviously, the Rockler hold down clamps, I went way overboard with walnut and I made these panels so they can be removable. It's nice because I just screwed them down and each panel they can be removed, which is nice. Uh, this part right here, I wanted to use it for, I could take this out and I could add a dado stack in it. But the only issue is now it's gonna hit that tape measure which the only workaround for that is to bump that out with a sacrificial piece of wood. And then that way the blade doesn't go all the way back here and, and cut that tape. It's not a big deal, um, but that's it's a, it's a possibility that I can add that. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, it's real nice and straight. The only thing I don't really necessarily like, it's like a double-edged sword. I like the extruded aluminum because I know it's straight. But the issue is there's gaps down in this. I'm gonna put this down here. There's gaps down there in each one of these little bays. And if you have a small enough piece, that wood's gonna go, go and get trapped in there. But you're not always gonna have the exact uh, perfect scenario for every little possible thing that you do. So I tried to incorporate everything that I could use in this thing. Um, and again, like I said, there's a couple, a couple things I would have done different. Uh, the only other thing about dropping these pieces in is you're limiting the blade. But for my application, it's not a big deal. For others, it might be, but for mine, it's not a big deal. So that's pretty much it. Um, it came out really nice. I'm really happy with it. And uh, got to give a big shout out to my cameraman, Nika. He's behind the camera and um, he did a great job. My wife took pictures and got the thumbnail. She did a great job. My one buddy Mario, he, he helped me out with some, some, uh, some wisdom and knowledge of what to say. And obviously Bourbon Moth and just everybody involved. I'm grateful for everybody. And uh, if I forgot people, I, I'm grateful for you guys too. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna put this baby to use. Guys, if you made it to this part of the video, I'm truly thankful. I can't thank you enough for all the love and support. And I just want to touch on my favorite Bible verse in the entire Bible. And it's Philippians 4.13. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. It's just such a powerful message. I love the verse. And I truly, truly did not find that joy until I started following him. I used to walk on my own path, on my own journey, and I have not found that true joy on this earth, and it's only through Him, and I just can't be thankful enough. So guys, if you're looking for a purpose, if you're looking for direction in your life right now, and you're a little bit lost, I was there, and I'm telling you, please get that head in that bottle. There's so much value, and you're gonna learn so much from it, so much wisdom and knowledge. It's just, a, it's a true blessing to, to read that Bible. So again, if you wanna subscribe, if you like this type of content, please do so. Appreciate you guys. I'm looking forward to more videos. God bless, peace.